Hi there. Well, Windows 8's been a pretty radical change, and to be honest, it's taken me a little bit of time to warm to it. But as I've used it more and more, and I've been using it for several months now, um, I've found that it's become my tablet platform of choice around the home in particular, over the, the Android tablets that I have, as well as the iOS iPads. Now, let me just clear this first. I'm not going to talk about the Windows RT tablets. Those are the tablets like the Microsoft Surface and the ASUS RT. Those are the tablets that are built on the same type of hardware as the Android and iOS tablets. That's with the ARM processor in them. Those Windows RT tablets, they're really limited in the same ways as the Android and iOS tablets are in terms of their capability and performance. Personally, I wouldn't bother with them. I'd just go straight to a Windows Pro tablet like this one here and the ones that I'm going to show you today. But if you're looking for a tablet for home and you're on a budget, then they're probably worth considering. With Windows 8, Microsoft has brought to the tablet that consumer-friendly touch environment that was made so desirable by the iPad. And they've done a really good job of it. But let's face it, the touch environment was designed 99% for entertainment. With the last time I looked on the iPad, 47 of the top 50 apps were games. And the other three, well, they didn't have much practical value in your life. So Windows 8 introduces that touch-friendly environment, and it's great for watching movies, it's great for playing games, for checking Facebook and Twitter, it's great for reading websites, blogs, books, you name it. And now don't get me wrong, these things are all very important. I've personally learned an enormous amount by reading and consuming information on tablets of all of the platforms, and they all do it very well, be it Android, iOS, or Windows 8. Now because of its fluid interface and its powerful web browser, Windows 8 has found a great place in the home for me. Now it's not all about entertainment though, because one of the benefits of this friendly touch environment is that it's just very easy to use. As a result, many companies have packaged up web applications into simple apps that do things like collect data, fill out forms, those sorts of things, and they've deployed consumer tablets like the iPads and Androids out to their staff to enable them to capture that sort of information while they're out and about. So we now have this powerful, simple app interface, very easy to use interface on Windows as well. And a lot of companies have really been waiting for that on the Windows platform. Now, as far as simplicity goes, having used an iPad for years now, as well as an Android tablet, Microsoft have really nailed the interface. It's by far the easiest to use of any tablet platform. It's very fluid. It's very easy to use and getting around it's just a pleasure. Now the real beauty of a Windows 8 Pro tablet is that you're not trapped in this touch-friendly operating environment. It's a real PC with a real operating system, so we still have our desktop environment. So we've got the choice, for example, of going to a touch-friendly browser, like IE 10, or we can go to our desktop environment and use a full desktop browser. It could be Internet Explorer, could be Chrome, could be Firefox, whatever you choose. And in terms of the browsing experience, on the Windows tablet, I can have dozens, even hundreds of windows open at once within the browser, whereas on the iOS and Android tablets, you're generally limited to less than 10 windows at a time, simply because the hardware can't handle it very well. So these tablets are vastly more powerful. Now, you can run the same software on this tablet as you do on your current laptop PC. Now, you can control it with your finger, you can control it with the digitizer pen, or you can get a keyboard and mouse like I have here, Bluetooth. Or with a tablet like the Fujitsu here, you can even get a clip-on keyboard that turns it into a laptop with an extra battery. How about that? So this is where we can get really productive on tablets. So for example, I'll be producing this video here on my rugged tablet here that's running Windows 8. It's got an Intel Core i7 processor and 16 gigabytes of RAM. That's a very powerful PC right there. Now it's just simply not possible to produce a video like this on one of these tablets here. The, the hardware just simply isn't powerful enough and it's just not practical to do it. And then there's the Word documents, PDF files and Excel spreadsheets that you have to deal with on a daily basis. Well, on this tablet, we're not dealing with a try-hard wannabe version of Excel. We have Excel, and that's the desktop version of Excel with its full power available to us on our tablet. And we can use it quite comfortably. Having the regular desktop version of Excel 
means that we have all of our macros, all of our formulas, all of our pivot tables and charts, they're all built right in. Now it's the same with Word. We've got a full version of Word here. We've got the full version of PowerPoint, full powered software. You can also have the full and touch friendly version of Outlook built right into your tablet. And that gives you access to all those rich collaboration features. You want to see somebody else's shared calendar? You can go ahead and look at that on the tablet because you have that capability and that rich collaboration environment that's built right into Outlook and Exchange. When you compare that again to the consumer tablets, you're really always dealing with a dumbed down version of that software. And as I've shown many times before, in all of the Office programs as well as Bluebeam Review, you have the ability to draw directly on your Word documents, Excel spreadsheets and PDF files. Now that just gives you an enormous boost in productivity because it allows you to respond to information in new ways and it allows you to respond faster and more accurately. There are a couple of negatives about Windows 8 though. First of all, the Windows team have dumbed down a few features in the desktop environment that I've really come to rely on in Windows 7. The first of those is touch flicks. They no longer work in the desktop environment. That's something that I really came to rely on in Windows 7. Now, that's the kind of feature that probably should be turned off by default. It's something that's a little bit more advanced. You need to learn how to use it. But once you do, it's incredibly powerful. Now, rather than removing this altogether, Microsoft really should have given advanced users the ability to turn that feature on. Unfortunately, in their pursuit of the simpletons that are switching to iPads, they've run roughshod over the power user. Here's another example of that. Where previously we could right click using two fingers, we can no longer do that in Windows 8 and instead we have to press and hold and wait. Now having to wait like that a hundred times a day, that just sucks. Also, the tablet input panel still has its handwriting recognition engine. It's by far the most advanced recognition engine that's out there and it is still very powerful. But Microsoft have simplified the interface to fit inside the keyboard panel size and as a result we're stuck with these two lines at a maximum and also they've simplified the input arrangement on the side making it not quite as nice to use as it was in Windows 7. The keyboard options in general are much better than they were in Windows 7. We can have a full proper keyboard here with numbers across the top or we can switch down to the simplified letters only dumbed down keyboard similar to what you get on the iPad. The beauty is here, you're not stuck with that crappy keyboard. You can pick and choose. You can even go to a thumb style split keyboard and you can adjust the size of the keys on that keyboard. And lastly, well, the App Store. It's pretty bare when you compare it to the Android and iOS App Stores. But it has been building very quickly. We've seen every day more and more apps coming in. But I think that most business users are really going to choose this tablet, not for its app store, but for its desktop environment, the ability to run their existing software. So in that case, the app store, that's really just a bonus. Now, of course, an advanced Windows 8 tablet like the ones that I've shown you here are going to cost a lot more than an Android tablet or an iPad. But this tablet can easily replace a laptop. So instead of having to buy your employees a laptop and an iPad, you simply deploy the one device. So that has a cost benefit. But also when you consider managing two devices separately, there's also a huge benefit for your IT people, not to mention your own staff in having just the one device. There's no more synchronizing. There's no iTunes. There's no jumping through hoops to try and get hold of the data that you need. You don't have a connection. It doesn't matter. You've got all your data stored locally here. And probably, if you've got a tablet like this one here, on a 256 gigabyte solid state drive, that's the biggest drive you've got on any tablet by far. Now, of course, you can store all your files in the cloud as well, if you're that way inclined. I know I do. But the beauty of having a cloud storage service like Dropbox, for example, on a PC, is that all of your files are with you if you want them. It's just so much easier to do on a PC and it works right out of the box. So having spent a lot of time with all of these three popular tablet platforms, I can comfortably say that Windows 8 is by far the easiest to use. It's also the most powerful. Now when you throw in the desktop environment, 
and the awesome hardware options like any of these tablets here that are available, you aren't a winner. Now Windows 8 is not for everybody and it's not an iPad killer, not by a long shot. It is a powerful tablet platform though that will spawn a whole new era of productivity in tablet computing.